Good evening and welcome to Hopkinton High School for tonight's Varsity Boys basketball game as your hometown Hillers take on the Holliston Panthers. The Tri-Valley League is committed to the highest ideals of sportsmanship and establishing a healthy environment for interscholastic competition. The league will not tolerate negative statements or actions directed towards competitors, game officials, or fans in attendance. Such actions, including taunting, trash talking, and the berating of players or officials is included. The Tri-Valley League has adopted a zero tolerance policy. Thank you for abiding by these standards. Please respect all decisions made by officials. Please respect fans, coaches, participants, and opponents alike. And now, the lineups for this evening's game. For the Holliston Panthers. Starting at guard, number five, senior, Dylan Kasajarian. At forward, number 13, senior, Emil Exelholm. Starting at guard, number four, senior captain, Ryan Benko. Starting at forward, number 11, senior captain, Patrick Jewett. Starting at guard, number 12, senior captain, Andrew Lynch. The coach for the Panthers is Jenna Galster. And now for your hometown, Hopkinton Hillers. Starting at guard, number 10, sophomore, Tommy Ambersoni. Starting at guard, number 3, sophomore, Stephen Maffiori. Starting at forward, number 24, junior, Brendan Kelly. Starting at guard, number 32, junior, Ben McKenzie. And starting at forward, number 35, senior captain, Zach Sasitsky. The Hillers are managed by Cam Hutchinson and coached by Tom Keene. And now, would you all please rise for the playing of our national anthem by the Boys Hoop Band, Boys and Girls Hoop Band. Everybody and welcome to another season of Hiller Basketball as HKM TV presents the first of many boys basketball Hopkinton Hiller games here tonight as the Hillers host the Holliston Panthers. Hi, I'm Tim Halatic here with Steve Spector and Steve. Tonight is the first of many, but uh, are you excited to be back? Yeah, hey, it's great to be back, and uh, this is like our third season in a row, so we must be doing something right. <laughs> they keep the asses back. That's a good sign. But uh, again, Hopkinton Holliston always a big rivalry. Uh, real quick before the game starts, I can tell you uh, the, the Holliston uh, Panthers, they have uh, five starting seniors, and, and uh, the Hillers have uh, uh, one senior and uh, two sophomores and a couple and a, and a junior or two. So, so there's an uh, experience issue and a, definitely a height situation. So we'll see how that goes as the game gets going. All right, and speaking of height, Hawkinton lost a lot of that last year, including Kyle Rector and Jimmy Adams, two players over 6'5". That doesn't seem to stop the defense as a quick seal to start things off from Tommy Ambersoni. Holliston coming out in a 2-3 zone to start things off. Ambersoni out there with Zach Zizitsky, Ben McKenzie, Stephen Maffiori, and Brendan Kelly. Shot up, no good. 
fighting for the loose ball was Mafiori, and he's hit with the loose ball foul. Yeah, the Hillers uh, looking to just move the ball, get their legs under them, get a feel for the intensity of the defense uh, from Holliston. Uh, and they, now they've got a full court press on, on Holliston. See how that goes. Holliston manages to break the press. Trap in the corner, pass to the open three, knocked down by senior captain Ryan Benko for the first bucket of the season. Then a quick pass down the court from Hawkington, bounces off of a Panther and remains with the Hillers. Nice play by the cheerleader down, down there. Um, don't have her name on the, up, up here, but it was <laughs> nevertheless a good play. Hiller's got a box play coming up. Ball gets in to McKenzie. Now Ambersoni with it at the top of the key. Panthers in a man-to-man, -man. changing it up early. Ball nice circulating move. around the key. Drive for Matt Fiore. He is rejected by, it could have been three different Panthers on that play. Ball stays with Hopkinton. Sort of a double block there, and uh, the Pan Panther fans were just over the town line. Uh, enjoyed that play. McKenzie with it, drives, loses it, picked off by Halston. Now on the break. Fast break layup. Tough defense from Ambersoni as he fouls Patrick Jewett, who will be going to the line for two. Ambersoni got all got his money worth on that foul. He he um, you know fortunately there was no uh, no injuries there, but it was a, certainly a solid foul and uh, actually a good one to to make sure he didn't get the two. Obviously, obviously this is the first of two meetings between Hopkinton and Hollison. Last year in two meetings, the team split with Hopkinton winning the first game in Holliston and then Holliston getting some measure of revenge here in Hopkinton. Jewett went one of two from the line on that trip. 4-0 Holliston and now a missed opportunity from Hopkinton leads to an open three for Holliston. Knocked down, Andrew Lynch. And a that's quick timeout from Hopkinton. That's probably a good timeout. Uh, by the coach, uh, kind of gather themselves a little bit. Again, it's a lot of senior leadership. Every, everybody on, on the court for Hollison is a senior right now, and uh, first game for a lot of these Hillers, and uh, I think it was a good, good time to regroup there. Right, two open threes and one free throw so far for Hollison, starting off with a 7-0 lead. And again, maybe something to do with that defensive lap so far was the lack of the height that we were talking about. Yeah, and the, the, the Panthers, uh, their, their big guy, Emil Exilhomi, I don't know how you pronounce that. I'm, that was Exilhomi, I didn't hear it. That was a good effort. It was pretty good. I'm in the neighborhood, but he's formidable at being 6'10". and um, Allegedly. You know, so, so they say on the sheet. He does look around that height from up here in the perch, and uh, nevertheless, the, the Hillers really don't have anybody in that vicinity. So we'll have to see how that, uh, that big height differential plays out. But uh, right now, the Hillers need to see if they can gather themselves and keep their composure. It's the most important thing. Uh, play within themselves and uh, not panic. This Holliston team, though, nothing to scoff at. Again, going 15-5 in, in the season last year before falling in the sectional tournament. One of three or four teams, I believe, from the TVL last season to secure a postseason berth. And again, we mentioned before, Hopkinton, somewhat disappointing season last year with what seemed like a lot of talent, but weren't quite able to make the postseason. This year, obviously, Coach Keen looking to change that. That's a kick. The pass from Sazitsky out to Mafiori was knocked away by a Panther knee. Remains Hopkinton ball. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Again, still down 7-0. Ambersoni drives, throws up the tough shot. Manages to get backboard, but not much else. Halston on the break. Kelly drives, a nice move. Can't quite make it. Excuse me, Lynch with the drive and miss. Brendan Kelly with the rebound outlet to Zizitsky. McKenzie with the three. Quick shot, no out. good. A nice play. 
from Brendan Kelly to get free, but it looks like we know why he was able to. A foul called. Halston ball. Yeah, I have to say, at the risk of sounding like a homer, that was a wasn't very obvious from up here. Um, but again, being down seven nothing, any break would be great at this time. A nice pass from Lynch down, travel, and then another nice pass. However, a travel from Exel Home, Excel Home, excuse me. And we'll, a turnover. We'll figure that out. We'll have to confirm the pronunciation. But that was and a good call by the ref on that one. He, de he definitely did travel on that one. Still 7-0 lead for Holliston. A quiet last few minutes for both teams. McKenzie drives off the nice pass from Zizitsky, and he lays it in with the left hand. First bucket for Hopkinton on the season. Nice finish. Lynch with the three, wide open, knocks it down. Another open three for the senior. Holliston is having success breaking the Hopkinton press. And that's resulting in open shooters for uh, Allison, and they've taken advantage so, thus far. Well, Andrew Lynch, he seems to be in a little bit of a rhythm, which is not good news for the Hillers. Um, he's nailed, I think he's two for two, and uh, has a nice stroke there from three-point land. Szyzycki drives baseline. Blocking foul called. Halson fans wanted a turnover on the baseline, but a blocking foul called. And some new Hillers coming in for the first time. Ryan Kester enters the game. As well as Drew Rancatore. Szyzycki fights for the offensive board. Pass to the cutting. And one. Pass to the cutting Kester and one. Nice play from Hopkinton to get the bucket. Now with a chance to make it an old-fashioned three-point play. Yeah, Brendan Kelly, really nice, uh, almost a no-look pass. Perfectly placed, bounce pass underneath the big man from, Hall from Holliston. And uh, Ryan Kester in the, in the game for about 10 seconds, making his presence known immediately and with an opportunity for a three-point play. 10 to 4 score now with 4.43 left in the first quarter. That's a make big that three-pointer. Hopkinton, excuse me, Halston again breaking the press. The three, quick shot, no good off the front rim from Zachariah Latifi. Nice play. Drive from McKenzie, tough shot, no good. Rebounded by Halston. And Halston looking to press oh, offensively, nice. turns it over, and then gets the ball right back. Nice, nice. no look pass but blew the open layup. Lynch, who we've been talking about all day. Excuse me, that was Armstrong. Couldn't hit the open layup. In and out. Oh, too bad. Ambrosoni with a great job getting in position for the offensive board. Threw a bounce pass to no one. Results in a turnover. Exo Homey, uh, really, you know, again, at 6'10", is a real disruption for the Hillers. If, if He didn't get a block shot in that, but he really, really... Uh, Created some problems on that play. And a lob to Exel Home doesn't quite get oh, nice to the target. Hopkinson comes up with a loose ball. McKenzie drive, shot, bounces, no good. Exel Home with the rebound. Now Halston on the break. Again, another no look pass. And Latifi with the bucket. Now a 12 5 lead for Halston. Nice finish on that by Holliston. Little up, pace is picked up a little bit here. Shot fired from Breslin. No good, rebound. And one. Brendan Kelly collects the board and the foul. Couldn't make the shot, but will shoot two. A 12-5 lead for Halston with 3.15 left in the first quarter. Overall, not a bad quarter so far. Coach Keene's working some players in, getting them in their what looks to be their first varsity yeah, game a lot, experience. Yeah, a lot of new faces out here. Yep, that's good. Jack Breslin, I have to give a little plug because he's my neighbor. He lives right behind me on Huckleberry Road, so I'm kind of rooting for him a little bit. Of, again, a bit of a homer. Of course. But uh, good to see Jack out there. He shoots a lot in his driveway, I can tell you that. <laughs> Going 2-2 two two from the line that time is Kelly, 12-7 now. 
They're going to need Kelly to have a big game and stay out of foul trouble. A nice pass yeah, nice from Latifi to Kasarjan. Kasarjan, excuse me, as he makes the nice layup, a smooth play for Halston, now 14-7 lead. Boy, I, I, you know, Halston looks like a real uh, polished senior, you know, lots, lots of experience. They have a good flow. Uh, they're finishing their layups real good. And uh, Hawkington, just by nature of being a lot more underclassmen, are a little more uh, cautious out there offensively. But uh, it, it was good to see for a couple minutes, a little, a little up and down, and the, and the Hillers are not going to be, uh, you know, intimidated by the height and the experience. They're, they're playing, playing real well so far. And as you just saw and can hear now, we have the volunteer Hiller Pep Band comes to play for some of the games here for the Hillers. Always providing some entertainment for the fans as they're waiting for the players to come back out onto the court. That's a big game, opening night here, you know, a lot of energy. It's Friday night. Tomorrow's going to snow. Mm -hmm, right. uh, you can hear a little bit of the chirping going on with the, you know, in a, pos in a positive way with the... Uh, the Holliston fans are, are, are here. <laughs> McKenzie whips the ball over. Shot fired from Breslin. Excellent. He knocks it down. First shot of his career. Swish. Got to love it. The drive from Kasarjan, he's fouled on it on the drive on the floor. And Hollison will inbound the ball under the Hiller basket. There's some incidental contact there. McKenzie sitting down for the first time. And Kelly, Kelly, yeah. Kelly comes off the court, yeah, after a good solid few minutes from him. A lot of ball movement here from Hollison trying to find an open shot. Hiller defense pretty stingy right now. A lot of rotation. And a foul called on Mafiori, a reach out around the three point line. That's his second foul. Got to keep an eye on that. Mafiori, I mean. Jewett with it at the top of the key for Halston, calling out signals, looking for a pick. Gets one. Tough defense here from Hopkinton. Tough pass nice inside D. from Latifi, and it's taken away by Hopkinton. Easy. It almost turned right back over, but luckily for Kester, a foul called, a force out called on Halston. I think he called. I think. Was that a foul? No, I guess he didn't call a foul. Amber Sony with it now, top of the key, takes the long two. High arcing shot gets it to fall. Now Amber Sony with the steal on the defensive end. He's driving, looking to make things happen. Passes to the three, ball mishandled, missed opportunity there. Hopkinton still with possession. Amber Sony drives, spins. Mm. Travel called. I gotta say, I thought he kept his pivot foot on that one, but nonetheless, travel called. Halston ball. Yeah, the Hillers. It'll see. It'll be you know, Hillers hanging around just down 14-10 with a minute and a half to go in the quarter. I gotta commend him. You know, at first glance, you look at the number of players on each of the benches, and and Halston has twice as many people on the bench. It's a, a deeper, deeper situation, and uh, all the power to the Hillers. They're they're playing them tough. 1.30 left here in the first quarter. 14-12 lead for Hollison. Tough shot taken from Hollison's Christopher Ryan. Rebound goes to Ben McKenzie, who had a quick rest on the bench. Now back Easy. out on the floor. Amber Sony drives over to McKenzie. The three, not quite enough on it. Off the front rim, but rebound from Hawkinton. Amberson, he drives, almost gets the ball picked from him. Last off of Halston. Drew Rancatori, sophomore, 
coming off the bench. That was a big rebound. He, he battled for that, playing tough. You know, these guys, uh, Coach Keene's rotating players in every couple minutes, keeping people fresh as, as best he can. Good strategy, and so far it's paying off. Brandon Kelly back in the game for Hopkinton. He had a big impact on his last stint into the game. Let's see if he can help out in the last minute here with the Hillers trailing by three. McKenzie driving, trying to probe the defense. Ball circulating around the three-point line for Hawkins. There you Ball go. Ball inside to Kelly. Nice play all around for Matt Fiore to Kelly with the great seal. Able to get that bucket. Kelly, great use of his body. You know, he's a, he's a solid kid. He's, he just, oh, there you go. Mm. Great read from Zach Zizitsky, the senior, forward. Able to jump that pass. Couldn't quite corral it, but knocked it out of bounds. Yeah, Kelly and Zizitsky, they're going to they're gonna need to have continue to have good games and they, they have uh, done that already and uh, taking advantage of uh, Holliston's big man being out of the game for the last couple minutes and the Hillers cut the, have cut the lead to just to one point 27 seconds left now a good pass in from Patrick Jewett as that was corralled by Christopher Ryan and he drew the foul oh, that's a big that's a big uh, foul with him that's his third foul um, in the first quarter. Yeah, already so, on Kelly, yep. So that's a real, um, we'll see how that plays out. Not a good development if you're rooting for the Hillers. Shot clock is off. Paulson doesn't wait to use it with the corner three launch from Christopher Ryan. No good. And now Amber Sony drives down the court, oh, takes the contact, contact, no foul. McKenzie fighting for the rebound, manages to grab it and draws a foul on the floor. Flurry of movement there from both teams results in a loose ball foul. Now Hawkins Hill inbound with 7.8 seconds left in the first quarter. McKen Down one. Ben McKenzie, despite all that chaos, maintained control as best he could and got, got the call. Amber Sony steps back, fires the three. And a whistle called. Looks like an inadvertent whistle from what we can see up here. Coach Keen not happy with whatever just transpired. I'm not sure what he's uh, Two seconds about. left. Long shot from Hallson. Falls just short. And we end the first quarter with a 14-13 Hallson lead. And, Steve, it didn't start out too good for Hopkinton. And I still say overall they were outplayed in that quarter, but down by one. What do you think? Geez, they, they, I mean, they were down 7-0, and uh, it wasn't looking... Uh, too strong to start the game and then to Coach Keene's credit he's you know has been able to crawl, crawl back you know rotating a bunch of players in a lot of underclassmen you know the big challenge right now is, is uh, foul trouble you know so Brendan Kelly with three in the first quarter uh, it, I'm not going to coach from up here but it, you know it will, it'll be interesting to see if he how much he plays in the second quarter right and um, he's just got to be really careful and and to see if Holliston approaches him because he's a, he's a key to this game to stay close because he can deal with the the big guy down low. Right, uh, we've already seen him already get involved on the offensive glass. Right, and uh, you know a lot of these uh, young guards coming in, Breslin and you know, and uh, Bros. Uh, yeah, uh, Mafiori. Mafiori and, and others. Uh, th th these young guys are coming in and uh, really looking pretty composed right. after the first few minutes. Now they, they've got their legs under them, so it's good to see. So second quarter just about underway. Again, Hillers trail by one, 14-13. Look to get things going offensively in a relatively sloppy first quarter. Mafiori from three. Big one. Off the pass from McKenzie, a quick start, the first Hiller lead of the season, 16-14. Tough defense there from Zizitsky, no foul called. Leads to an open layup for Zachariah Latifi. Again, Hollison right away, having success against the Hiller Press. McKenzie open for three, did not take it, passed it over to Amber Sony. McKenzie looked like he wanted to drive. Dishes it off to Amber Sony, mm. history no good. Loose ball, tipped away by Hollison and now corralled by Latifi. 
Tough pass inside. Uh oh. To number 30, Noah, Noah Salem. That's his third. Good position and, and another foul called. We'll see. This oh, one. They called on. I'll get it. At the second on uh, Amber Sony. Yep. So another player with multiple fouls for Hopkinson. Just uh, within a minute here of the second quarter. And now Salem will shoot free throws. I'm not As sure the if they got that foul right or not, but I, uh, we'll see. Missed free throw leads to an open three for Hopkinson. No good. Loose ball tipped around. Szyski fighting for it. Tried to muscle around for a reverse layup. Stepped out of bounds on the baseline. Turnover, Hopkinton. Szyski working hard underneath. Just kind of foot slipped out of bounds on that play. Oh, nice, nice recovery. Yeah, turnover there for Halston. Hopkinton gets it right back. Amber Sony faked the walk up three with a nice bounce pass to Rancatori. He couldn't handle it. A turnover for Hopkinton. Pass oh, good D. Rancatoni. Axel Home looking for the ball, couldn't get it. Wow. Walking that, foul. That one brought the whole Hiller bench up. I'll tell you what, Drew Rancatori steals the ball from the six foot ten Panther around the back, takes it up strong, draws a foul. That's that's a Tommy point there. <laughs> if, you're, if you're Tommy Heinsohn, if he was here, we'd give him a Tommy point. And then he hits the free throw. So that's that's a big-time play for the sophomore. Well, Tommy did say we had the uh, ability to give those out, so I'd say you oh, can okay. give them one. Oh, okay. You must have an inside track. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know him personally. <laughs> nice. Good, nice rotation. Two free throws there. That time for Rancatori. 18-16 lead for Hawkinson. Tough D. Tough D. Nice drive. Easy, Fancy easy. Lewis with Sargent. No good on the shot attempt. Now McKenzie with it for Hawkinson. Clock. I don't know if it's a clock issue. Ref going over to the scorer's table. Looks like whatever issue was solved. Yeah, it looks like uh, it was a clock issue. Good catch by the ref. Good play. Just over six minutes left here in the first half. An 18-16 lead for Hopkinton. Ambersoni drives and draws a foul That's on the a floor. It's a one-on-one, I believe. Six minutes left. Both teams in a one-on-one. -on -one. I'll slow the game down a little bit, but... That might not be a bad thing for the Hillers. I like how the Hillers are they're all talking to each other. I've got this guy, you take that guy. Breslin's Lee's a sophomore leading leading the discussion out there. That sounds good leadership signs there. Amber Sony knocks down the first free throw. 19-16 lead now for Hopkinton. Hiller's hitting most of their free throws. I don't have the stats. Yeah, we'll have to get on that at halftime. But Short on the second free throw, but a nice offensive there rebound. There you go. That's Mac Lind gets in there. And I got to say, it did not look like much of a foul up here from Exel Homey, but a great play nonetheless yeah, it's from Lind to get in there. Might not have helped him on that play that he was 6'10". Right. He, he was just standing there with his arms up, but... Um, Either way, Lind shooting two after the nice offensive board. Yeah. Heck of a hustle play by Lind. He misses the first, second one upcoming. Nice. Second one is good for the junior. Hiller's uh, taking it to him. Just under six minutes to go in the half to the halftime. Yeah, uh, opening up a four-point lead. I'm yeah. enjoying myself watching this game. The sergeant got some good ball handling skills. Fires a no-look pass. An assist taken away off the miss layup there from Noah Salem. Still 2016 Hopkinton.
Lorenzo. You can hear it. You can hear the slapping up here. Lynn drives. Nice oh. shot. Gets the nice right-handed hook to go down. 22-16 now. That's a heck of a play. Good D by Breslin. The sergeant drives, gets the ball slapped away on the pass. You know, the Hiller, Hillers, are, excuse me, Hillers are playing defense where their feet, they're not reaching. They really shut, shut the Panthers down this quarter, largely. I don't know, I forgot what the score was at, at after the first quarter, but. Latifah uh, fires the three. Spoke too soon. <laughs> Latifi knocks down the three, 22-18 now, Hopkinson. Amber Sony trapped right past half court. Oh. Amber Sony with a foul, I believe. I don't know how many that that might be. It was a nice trap. That's his third too. Nice so. trap by Holliston right at a, right after a half court. Amber Sony fell right into it. Good defense there, and then a tough play to compound the turnover with a foul. Now his third. Yeah, so there's two two players with three fouls, two critical players. Ambrosoni and Kelly both with three fouls with five minutes left or so in the second quarter. You know, just an opportunity for the uh, some of the other players to play some big big time ball right now. Friday night, opening night, see what they can do. It does not bode well for Hopkinton, though, because as we look across at the benches here, only four players who are dressed. And two, two of the uh, nine available players have three fouls, so not a good sign for Hopkinton. We'll see if they can kind of maintain the slim lead. As Lynn drives baseline, wanted to go up with it, passed it away, McKenzie open for three, knocks it down. Lind, a bit of a spark here for Hawkinson, coming out with four quick points and then the nice assist there. And of course, picks up the foul oh. right there. Well, Hill Hillers, hit, you know, if they can keep hitting some threes uh, as they've been doing, that's going to be uh, a tough thing for the Panthers to deal with. Going to the line now is Dylan Kasarjan, the senior. Knocks down the first of the one and one, 25 to 20 with 4.34 left in the first half. Hillers lead. And Sargent knocks down both. 25-21 lead now for Hopkinson. Both teams hitting their free throws for the most, most part. Look out. McKenzie with a nice move, and drives. Oh. Cannot complete the and one, but it's rewarded with two free throws. Nice drive from, the, from Ben McKenzie, the junior. So we don't have, we'll have to talk to our, uh, our staff so we can get some height. Uh, we have the stats for Halston and their height, which is fun to talk about <laughs> because we can only speculate how tall some of these guys right. are, but... Um, Certainly Ben McKenzie looks like a solid, solid guy, and uh, he's, he's using his body real well. And, and drew, drew a really good foul on that. He's now he's going to hit his free throws, and he just missed the first one. But Now coming back into the game for Hopkinson, Drew Rancatore. Some good minutes from Mac Lynn just came, came out. A lot of good athletes on, on Hopkinson, and uh, so far so good. Kassarjan drives. Great play from Kassarjan. Thought he was going to give the ball up. Took it the whole way for the easy lay-in. Easy. Made it look easy. <laughs> and then a tough pass there from McKenzie. Some miscommunication ends up going out of bounds. And a turnover for Hopkinton. Holliston within three points. Yeah, there's a momentum swing at the moment here. Holliston's got a couple buckets in a row. Hillers need to stop.
drive, tough layup attempt from Andrew Lynch. He can't make it. Jump ball, good call. And a loose ball, loose ball, a jump ball is called. This one's going to stay with the Panthers. Good D by the Hillers on that play. Quick pass inside, catching him sleeping. Patrick Jewett threw the pass inside to Latifi, and he drew the foul on the quick shot. Short arm, the first one right up the front rim. The last foul was on McKenzie. That was his first because we just got to keep track of some fouls because they, they got to finish the game. Second one short again for Latifi. Rebounded by Kester. McKenzie drives. Nice play. Can't quite get the finish. Nice. Rebound from Halson. Turned right back over. McKenzie to three. Over to Breslin. He can't quite knock it down. Pass inside. Saved by Hopkinton right into the hands of Drew Rancatore, and he knocks down the lane. That was, a, that was a good break for the Hillers there. Almost a cardinal sin to save the ball underneath your own hoop, but he, oh, nice D. That time, great defense from Kester. He forces a steal. McKenzie drives, gets contact, no foul called. Now Kassarjan fakes the pass, left-handed lay-in. What a play from Kassarjan. Tell you, he's impressed me so far this game. A crafty dribble and finishing there with the weak hand. And Breslin catches the ball, sheds some contact, and steps Jeez, out of bounds as he does it. I would agree there was contact. Was, I would maybe just uh, in, embellish a little. There was maybe more of a push, but Breslin's got a sneaker issue. He's got he's to fix his sneaker. They should let him do that for a minute. Everyone got to catch their breath. The 2.52 left in the first half. Hiller's holding on to a tight lead, 28 to 25. Uh, dealing with some foul trouble on a couple of key players, but to their credit, man, they're, they're, they're playing some tough ball, really intense D, and, uh, and this Panther team is pretty, pretty good. So see if they can keep it competitive and uh, hold on to this lead going into halftime. Also now bringing it down the court. 2.45 left in the first half. 28-25 lead for Hopkinton. A bit of a momentum swing now for Holliston. Kassarjan, the tough shot. Good deep. Too much on that one. Rebounded by Szyzycki. Now Breslin with it. Breslin thought about the three fakes, steps inside, takes a quick shot off the front rim. Now Szyzycki for three. Mm. He's too strong. Rebounded by Kassarjan. He passes it up. No good on the layup. And second attempt from Jewett and then Lynch. Now Szyzycki drives Oof. and bowls right over the Hollison defender. Crowd wanted the and one, but that foul's called on the court, and it looks like Ryan Benko, the Hollison senior, is a little worse for wear after that one. Boy, I don't know if that was a, it was a collision. I don't know if their heads collided. It was either underneath the, the Holliston player, but he took he took the brunt of that one. And Szyzycki's a solid kid, so uh, kind of ran him over, but the Holliston player wasn't set, so there's a foul there, and it's two shots because they're in the double bonus. These are big free throws. Yeah, he, uh, Szyzycki made the first one. Refs figuring out another issue at the scorer's table. Looks like that's all set. Szyzycki's second free throw upcoming. Second one is good, big five point throws. lead. Big free throws, yep. Now Benko bringing it up for Halston. Shot from Latifi, knocks it down. He has been a solid source of scoring so far for the Panthers. He's a tough player, six foot three, hitting, draining three pointers. Nice play by, oh there you go. Quick shot, no good from Kester. Rebound though, taken away. Drew Rancatori gets in there with the left handed finish.
Drive from Lynch, no good on the shot. Rebounded by Hopkinson. Good dig. Oh, too bad. Lynch back in the game again. And hit with the travel call upon receiving that pass. Now Breslin will take a break as Szyzycki comes back on, onto the court. Short break again for him. Oh, nice bank ah. drives. Great look to Latifa. Couldn't hit the open layup. And then a loose ball foul called on Hollison. Well, that was a beautiful entry pass. Um, and Latifi, he's been hitting everything, and that was a rather easy shot compared to some of the other shots he's hit tonight, and he kind of uh, didn't make it. And then he, then he had a, a little out of frustration, uh, got his first foul of the night, which works out nicely uh, for Drew. Rankatori, who's uh, draining uh, free throws as we speak. Here's his first one. Second win up, no good. Five point lead for Hopkinton. Just under a minute now left in the second quarter. That's a walk. And the refs are on top of that call here today. As Latifi takes a little step before he starts dribbling. Turnover for Halls. Pass tipped nice away, recovery. recovered by Hawkinson. McKenzie with the pass up. Lind now with a great dish to oh, Zizitsky. Too, too strong. Brankator grabs the offensive board off the glass. No good. Another offensive rebound. Beautiful. And he draws a foul this time. The sophomore getting involved on the offensive glass. Boy, he's he's a he's a handful right now for for Holliston, they don't have an answer for him. And uh, I'll tell you what, Rankatori, he's dominating in the last minute or so. Plant, very athletic player, and, uh, and he's draining the majority of his free throws. So this, this is a good formula so far. Hill is scoring some decent amount of points, 34 to 28, with 33 seconds left in the half. No good on the second. Lind rips the rebound away. The layup, no good, but Rankator again oh, gets in there. What a game for the sophomore. Cleaning up the glass. Misses the second free throw and says, you know what, I'll That's score again anyway. Kassarjan hit with a travel down the lane. It was a nifty move, but a little few too many steps. Yeah. You have Euro steps and then you have three steps. And that was about three steps. But uh, the, the refs put overall calling a good game so far and they caught that one. A nice trap from Halston. Rang Katori recovers it. Again, he's looking to score again. Draws a foul down low. 4.7 left now. Rang is all over the place and it looks like he's going to be shooting free throws. Yeah, he's really disruptive right now and very athletic. Holliston coach Jenna Galster. A lot of opportunities. It's interesting with, with the way the Hillers are handling the glass in the last few minutes. Uh, she's, ch she's chosen to keep her her big man, uh, Emil Exohome, on the bench. I'm not sure what the reasons are for that. I don't think he's in foul trouble, but uh, he was disruptive when he was in. Rankator goes one Ooh. of two from the line on that trip. And on the loose ball, a foul called. Looks like on Lind on that one. And now Hollison will go to the line. 3.1 seconds left here in the first half. And while we have a second, we just want to let you know that during the halftime break, if you guys stay with us, you'll get a chance to listen to the Hiller Volunteer Pep Band. So stick around for that. But for now, free throws from Holliston. First one is good from Lynch. Also want to give a quick shout out to our director, Mike Tarosian, doing graphics night. Samantha Dings on the cameras, John Ritz and Bob Hamilton. Thanks a lot, all you guys, for keeping things moving very smoothly. Ooh. A missed free throw results in an open corner three for Lynch. As time expires, no good. And here we go into halftime with a 37-29 lead for Hopkinton. Boy, I'll tell you what, uh, real, real quick uh, before we take a quick break, 
if, if you, as we said earlier, Tim, you know, we looked at the starting lineups. My initial feeling was this may not go well for the Hillers. And then look at the score. The Hillers have put almost 40 points on the board. They're up 37 to 29, up eight points. I wouldn't have predicted that looking at the start of the game. And uh, hats off to them. The, the key, key things to look for in the second half are the fo is foul trouble. So right. we'll see how that plays out. All right, guys, so we'll be back here after a short break. We hope you come back and join us. H-S, let's go! H-H-S, let's go! H-H-S, let's win! Go, go! Fight, win!
are back here at the Hopkins and Hillers home court with the Hillers holding a seven point, eight point advantage, excuse me, 37-29 over the Holliston Panthers. And we saw a bit of a uh, weird first half there, Steve, I'd say. First quarter, the Hillers didn't play so well, but managed to stay close, and then the second quarter kind of reversed their fortune around a little bit and now hold an eight point advantage. Uh, well, well summarized there, Tim, and I would agree and that's, again, uh, the big difference in the experience. But, uh, you know, hats off to the bench of the Hillers uh, and, and the young guards, the sophomore guards, keeping their composure. Um, really exciting to see some of the, the active uh, work on the boards by Drew Rancatori and uh, Mac Lynn coming off the bench and really disrupting things. And uh, we'll see if the, now it's really up to the Holliston Panthers to see if they can react to the Hillers because right now the Hillers have some momentum going. And, uh, again, we'll keep an eye on the foul situation. Brendan Kelly with three fouls starting the second half. He's on the floor. And um, one other player, we'll get uh, to that. Ambersoni. Yeah, Ambersoni also Ambersoni. starting the second half with three fouls. So um, keep an eye on that. And back out on the court is Emil Exalome for Halston, their tallest player who uh, curiously vanished, seemed about halfway through the first half. And now he's back out on the court. So... Doesn't seem to be an injury thing, but in any event, we'll let you know if anything develops with him as a loose ball goes out of bounds off of Halston. Hopkins in ball. Pass inside to Kelly. Tough play there for him to handle, knocked away by Axelholm. He's got some big wingspan there. Axelholm, he's, he's not a very solidly, he's a slender young man, but Certainly a ooh, nice pass. Kelly wasn't quite ready for it. Got knocked away from a Hollison player. Uh-oh. And the shot Travel. up from Hollison, from Patrick Jewett. Looked like he threw an elbow there, midsection, and that is what they called an offensive foul. Called well, that, on the clear out. I, th I think uh, that was the right call, but it was a really close call. Almost, almost the fourth foul on Ambrosoni on that right. one, so that, that worked out well. McKenzie looking to, for the give and go. No luck there. Ambersoni drives left hand up. Gets whacked across the chest there or the face. Draws the foul and shoots two. Exo Holm is third foul, so maybe that was, had something to do with why uh, Coach Gelser of Holliston decided to keep him out because he had two fouls, which we were not aware of. Now he has three, and that's a big development uh, for both teams. And it looks he might be coming out at this. We'll see how there's a substitution coming in. And, and there you yeah. go. Steve, you called it. He exits the court after 39, 31 seconds. Could be 41 seconds. Picking up a foul and right back to the end of the bench. As Ambersoni knocks down another free throw. 39 29 lead for Hopkinson. The nice sergeant, move. the nice dribble by, drive by, lays it in, wrong hand. Still gets it to fall. Beautiful play. Nice finish. Three fire from McKenzie. No oh. luck. Rebound by Zizitsky, and he draws the foul on the putback. Didn't wait to come down to put that one back up. Rebounded it, shot it all in one motion, drew the foul. Really good athletic move by Zizitsky. First free throw, no good from the senior. Kind of Strong on the second one again, rebounded by Andrew Lynch. And he brings it up the whole way, drives, nice take, Oof. gets it to fall down. Lynch, the senior. Nice finish. Did, didn't really have much of an angle. He somehow maneuvered the ball in off the board. Now a six-point lead for Hopkinton with 6.30 left here in the th uh, third quarter. Oh, look, a bit of a lazy pass from Ambasoni. Lucky wasn't picked off. Matthew ends up with the open three and knocks it down. That was a big hoop. 
Mafior, the brother of Ali Mafior, who graduated last year from, who was a big part of the girls team. Now, Steven getting his chance to shine on the varsity level, and he does there with the three. That's his third foul. Mafiori's third foul. Yep, so that's three players now with three fouls on Hopkinton and one on Holliston. As the layup there from Holliston brings it to a seven point game, 42 35. Szyzycki thought about the three. Him and Mafiori playing catch with it. Not much movement going on for nice Hopkinson. Szyzycki takes it all the way. Beautiful. Gets the left hand delay in the fall. Bailed out there by the good play from Szyzycki because not a lot of movement on offense. But a bucket nonetheless. The sergeant pass inside using his body was Jake Armstrong. Couldn't get the bucket. McKenzie, the nice pass to Szyzycki. Nice. With the finish. Szyzycki having a big second half already with a few buckets and just a lot of positive momentum there and the Panthers uh, all of a sudden find themselves down by 11 points. I'm sure they didn't think that was going to happen tonight. Right, and that prompted the uh, timeout there from Coach Gallister. As we saw there on the screen, Coach Keen happy with what he's seeing. A lot of hustle, a lot of effort. And then we get the open shot there from Szyzycki. Yeah, and this, the Hillers really have composed themselves. So the, again, as we said earlier, they were first four or five minutes of the game, they were just getting their legs under them and and realizing that, hey, we might be sophomores and juniors and they may have a lot of seniors, but, and, uh, you know, they, they've they really gathered themselves and then some since then and find themselves, uh, it's not a really comfortable lead because anything, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of spurts can happen and, and the Panthers are more than capable of a little run and gun and getting a few hoops in a row, but right now the Hillers are up by 11 with 525 left in the third period. We saw there a nice shot of the Hiller faithful. Out here, the first game of the season. Doesn't matter when or where, crowd will be here. Maybe they're all prepped up from an exciting football season. Either way, we're moving on to basketball now. The shot. Oh! A blocking foul there called against Hopkinton on the tough that's, take. That's his there. fourth. His feet look set from here. That was a big collision. He's gonna, Coach Keen's gonna have to make a move here, I think. Yeah, That's Amber his fourth Sony foul. With his fourth foul, the important sophomore is having a big game today. Looks like he will be replaced soon as Ryan Kester's getting ready to come in. And that's right, Amasoni takes a seat as well as Zizitsky. Rankatori comes back in. That's unfortunate because I'll tell you, uh, Amber Sony, he did everything right there. That was a heck of a collision, but from, from up here, it looked like he was set. Um, and that's a, that's a major development as the game. There's plenty of time left, so we'll see how that goes. Short on the free throw, rebounded by Lynch. Now Kassargent fires a three and knocks it down. He has been a force for Hollis in all game, and he knocks down the three, brings them within eight. Now McKenzie, quick to force the issue on the other side, draws the region foul from Jake Armstrong. Armstrong's first. Eight-point lead for Hopkinton, five minutes left in the third quarter. Yeah, we have a fan's ball roll out onto the court. We had some extra, an extra ball and a lot of, a lot of younger kids on the side that are scattering uh, coincidentally at the same time as the ball ran on the... You don't, you don't say. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Want to get away moment there. Lazy pass there from Mafiori nice. out of the corner. Nice, beautiful but he play. He back and takes the ball back Easy. away. McKenzie drives, avoids the charge, gets his own rebound off the miss. Kester with it now, three point line. Breslin back in, he kicks it over. Mafiori fakes, launches the three. Just too much on it. And the ball Good is hustle. grabbed by two Hillers and a Panther. Loose ball. Jump ball, excuse me. I'll tell you, Tim, this is a heck of a game. Opening oh. night, both, you know, two rival towns here, bo both represented well uh, in the in the stands, uh, which is which is great. Yeah, it seems like everyone here is ready for the start of the season. Yep. 
Breslin. Kassarjan gets it taken away. A couple of hillers on the floor there. Kester over to Breslin. Breslin almost turns it over, finds Mafiori. He wanted the three, couldn't quite handle the pass. Plenty of time, 20 seconds on the shot clock. Pass inside. That's a foul. Rancatori no has it now with the nice cut, Breslin. That's a big hoop, they needed that. They hadn't had one in a while. Ooh. Tough foul there from Ben McKenzie as Lynch slams his head on the ground. Paulson fans in a bit of an uproar, but it just seemed like an unfortunate play. That was just a good aggressive. I don't think that was a dirty play, and it was unfortunate. And as you can see, there's good sportsmanship going on out there. Uh, the Hiller players making sure that. Yeah, McKenzie making sure that Lynch is okay. Seems to be all right, yep. getting ready for his free throws. Good news is we have uh, one of the best athletic trainers in the business, Jeanette Emerson, again, one of my neighbors. Always good to have a trainer in the neighborhood in case uh, anything goes astray. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's comforting to have, that, have her living ac almost across the street in our neighborhood. But Jeanette Emerson here to make sure everyone stays uh, healthy. But she jumped off her chair and make sure that... Um, Lynch was okay. I guess he is. He just sunk a couple free throws. So. Yep, Lynch's got a scowl on his face, not happy with the foul, but knocks down both free throws. 48 to 40 lead for Hopkinton. There he goes, a frustration foul there for Lynch. Tried to jump the pass, ran right through the body of Jack Breslin. You know, you, at, looking at the benches, Tim, you know, you can see four available players for the Hillers. We talked about that earlier in about uh, four, nine, or, or whatever that is. Right. Ten, I don't know. I've lost. But anyway, uh, there's, a, there's a few injuries on the, on the Hillers, and some of these guys, like Breslin and some of the other guys, are stepping up big time. Amazing so far. McKenzie drive baseline was cut off by Bosca, by Benko, excuse me. Ball goes out of bounds, awarded to Halston. And apparently the Halston player is not taking that foul from McKenzie too kindly as we've seen some gestures towards McKenzie's direction. Nothing serious yet, but something to keep in mind. As Lynch drives, the tough take, no good. Jump ball. And Lynch very clearly frustrated ever since that foul. He's firing up all of his classmates here from Holliston who made the trek over here. Uh, he's playing a lot of emotion and uh, not a bad thing if you're rooting for Holliston. He's bringing, bringing it, his game, for sure. Call a foul on that? Looks like a loose ball. Lynch again running around the court causes that was a bad a really, pass. That was a really tough call. I got to say, they've called a, a good game, and I, I, I'm, I don't want to get too, too fired up, but that was just two guys going for the ball. Just incidental contact. On, I, don't, I don't think you call a foul on either one of them that play. That was Breslin's first foul. Sazitsky back in the game now. He'll have the task of covering Lynch. Sargent with some fancy moves, loses the ball in the spin, taking the layup all the way and missing. Uh-oh. It was Ryan Kester, and the ball goes out of bounds off of the Hillers. I'm saying uh-oh because it looked like it was Kelly's fourth foul, but it was just out of bounds. No, no foul there. <laughs> Brendan Kelly stepping out, not a bad move. To save him, again, him and his three fouls for the fourth quarter, perhaps, is what Coach Keene is thinking about. Oh. And a foul called down low as Kasarjan was driving. I think that was on Mafiori. Uh, just almost accidental. 
the legs got kind of crossed up, and that's his fourth foul. So, Not looking good for Hawkington in the foul department. Still maintaining an eight-point lead with 2.26 here in the third quarter. The pass almost picked off by Hawkington. Lucky for Halston to keep it. Latifi thought someone was around him and didn't come down for that layup. Caused the miss. Hopkinton lucky now with possession. Sadinsky drives. Mafior thought about the three. Turned it down. Oh. Frank Ator loses the ball. And Lynch driving. Finds the open cutter. Layup for Patrick Jewett. Now Halston within six. That was a big swing right there. The Hillers were working for a good shot and just a four-point swing there. Szyzycki drives. A blocking foul called as Halston tried to get over late. Benko tried to draw the charge. Said just knocked over. Excuse me, not Benko. Jewett. That's a big aggressive play by Szyzycki again. Right now it's what used to be an 11-point lead has gotten cut to six. Halston clearly has had the momentum, and Szyzycki, senior, at the line, uh, he, he had a few early buckets in the third quarter uh, to extend the lead, and he hasn't had any since then. And, you know, with another minute and, a, minute and 41 left in this quarter, we, they could use a couple buckets from him. He missed the first one here, second, second shot coming. Second shot up, no good. Rebound out of bounds. Lynch ball tipped off of Lynch and touched out of bounds before he got it. Lucky for Hollison because his save, his saving pass went right into the hands of Mac Lind, who had an easy layup. Still a, not a bad break, Tim. Uh, Hillers get the ball back, even missing two free throws, and they have another another shot at two points or three points. McKenzie looking to get it in. Manages to find Breslin. 25 seconds still on the shot clock for Hopkinton. Szyzycki spins. The nice Beauty. finish. The nice finesse move. Szyzycki around the Hollison defender. Driving and bucket good from Christopher Ryan. Takes a little bit of contact, steadies himself with the right hand That's and knocks a heck it down. Of a, heck of a play. Moving away from the basket. McKenzie with some nice moves. Does not get the bucket to fall, but draws a nice foul. Yeah, both teams uh, realizing the game's winding down. Going to be with a minute and two left in the third quarter. Ben McKenzie taking it strong to the hoop. Drawing the foul. Now first free throw for McKenzie is good. 51-44. Just over a minute left in the third quarter. They're all big free throws at this point, but to, you know, overall, again, we don't have the statistics, but the Hillers have done pretty well at the free throw line all night long overall. 2-2 two two on that trip for McKenzie. Eight-point lead now. That's a and again, the refs on top of that call again. A travel for Christopher Ryan. A little starter step before he got going. Turnover for Halston. McKenzie again taking Ooh. things on his own. Tough play there as he threw a pass over the head of Mafiori. Turnover for Hopkinton. Crean not happy. Looking for some more from his team. Ooh, almost a travel. The sergeant, the nice no-look pass inside. The great turnaround spin move from Daniel Dagnachu. Great, great move inside. Sweet move. Good use of his body. Nice finish on that one. Shot clock is off. Hillers with a six-point lead. 15 seconds and counting left. 
McKenzie with it now at the top of the key. Dagnachu on him. McKenzie drives, kicks it over. Zizitsky for three. Not quite enough on that one. Loose ball. Thrown out of bounds, and that will do it here for the third quarter. Hopkinton up 52 to 46. And Steve, that was a uh, that was a crazy third quarter. I'd say a lot of a lot of fouls. We had some right, players hit the floor, the some temper flaring, but at the end of it, Hopkinton still up six. Yep, yep. Uh, we have a we have the raffle here. I don't know, uh, Michael. Just keep on going. All right, tonight's winner is eight zero two three three one. There's a lot of a lot of noise going on here as we take a break for the between third and fourth quarters. Uh, just to piggyback on what you said, Tim. Yeah, the, the Hillers had an eight-point lead at the half, and it was a real helter-skelter third quarter. Hillers up, uh, hanging on to a six-point lead, so that was a pretty even third quarter. Uh, fouls are going to come into play. Uh, Coach Galster of Holliston has chosen to keep uh, her her big man Emil yeah, Exel home. Uh, you know. He missed most of the third quarter. He's still on the bench. You right. know, again, we don't know everything going on there, but he's only he only has three fouls. So, um, as far as we know, he's available. And with him not being on the floor, that's allowed the Hillers to take the ball up strong and uh, create some opportunities. And if they haven't hit the shots, they've hit they've hit a lot of their foul shots. So that's uh, helped them maintain their six-point lead to date. And And Mafiori for Hopkinton has four fouls, and he's played a key part in this game, knocking down some timely threes and making some plays. So again, another Whoa. thing that people have to keep in mind. Ball tossed out of bounds there from Halston. A turnover early here in the fourth quarter. Every play counts. That was a little sloppy there by, by Holliston, and see if the Hillers can take advantage of that. Mafiori was waiting for the handoff there from McKenzie, a bit off target. But a bit unusual, to, you know, as far as the game's gone so far to have quick turnovers like that, unforced errors, if you will. Both teams have, haven't had a lot of those, and all of a sudden, the critical point in the game. Latifi Ooh. fires the three and knocks it down. He's got a great stroke, and he's shown it here tonight. Hollison now within three. That was a nice stroke, as you said. He's got a rhythm that we hope doesn't. McKenzie continue. drives, takes a decent hit there, and he'll shoot two more free throws. Hillers are in a one and one. Uh, that's, this looks like a shooting foul, but from now on out, they're they're in the bonus. And. Uh, Holliston on the next foul will also be in the one on one. So, Drew uh, Rancatore and Andrew Lynch now coming back out onto the court. Second free throw for McKenzie. No good. Just four point lead for Hawkinton. Now a loose pass from nice. Dagnachu recovered by Arizona. His pass over to Rancatore. He misses the shot. And a loose ball results in a foul. That's a one and one for Brendan Kelly, who had a big, big start to the game, really had a big presence, got into some foul trouble early. To C Coach Keene's credit, he's, he's uh, kept him out of trouble, and, and now he's uh, got the whole fourth quarter ahead of him and had some great body position on that play and drew the foul. His first free throw is good. Five point lead now for Hopkinton. Also a solid member of the football team who had an unbelievable season. Uh, Brendan Kelly I'm speaking about and uh, he hits the first one. Second one off the front rim, rebounded by Lynch. Now Kasarjan with it. He drives. Trump ball. Nice play from Ryan Kester. Did not did not reach in, was able to grab just the ball and forces the jump ball, and Hopkinton takes over. Oh, 
Ambrosoni also with four fouls, and uh -oh. he just picked up another one right there after giving up the ball. Tough start for the sophomore this season. That's too bad. He's just uh, picked up his fifth foul. He knows it. He just went right to the bench. That's that's too bad. He's got a long career ahead of him. He's only a sophomore. He had a great game. Uh, those those uh, reaching fouls will be fewer and fewer as his career moves along. But uh, he's had, he had a great game. So you know, contributed a lot to keep the Hillers uh, in the game and a lead too. So. John Jewett missed the free throw, but Lynch, with a saving effort, throws it off of a Hiller, keeps the ball in Halston's favor, Halston's possession. 54-49, 6.47 left in regulation. Quick pass inside, Latifa. Latifi, excuse me, gets it to fall. Latifi, he's, a, he's got a really good shooting stroke, and he didn't bring the ball down. He got rid of that ball in about a split second. He's tough. He's six foot three. He's a he's a handful. Pass inside Kelly. Mm. He draws the foul, even though it looks like a surgeon took the worst of that collision. Kelly draws the foul, and now will be shooting. I think there was a bit of a disagreement on that call. One of the refs underneath did not call it. It was right in front of him, but the, the ref up top here did call the foul. It looked like a lot of ball, and I, don't, I know that the Holliston bench in its entirety did not agree with a foul, so. Kelly does not care about Holliston's disapproval, knocks down <laughs> the first free throw. <laughs> so you see Coach Galser there looking Got on. Got hands on the hips, not happy with that call. I, I, I don't blame her. That was looked to be pretty clean. I suppose they're not happy until they win, though, right? Right. Lynch, with a nice play, takes the ball down the court. Two points. Settled down a bit from that third quarter, but still out there playing very hard for the Holliston Panthers. McKenzie, the nice pass. Zizitsky drives, oh. avoids the defender. Zach Zizitsky with a great finish. Coach Keen, interesting timeout. Six minutes left after a hoop, calls a timeout. Just trying to keep things under control. He, again, this is where the senior leadership of Holliston can come into play or not. Right. And uh, also seeing how the, the younger Hiller team can uh, deal with the pressure of the tight game as it winds down. And perhaps some of uh, Coach Keen's timeouts have something to do with the lack of bench depth here today. We saw a lot of players on the bench for Hopkinson. And then we have one who just fouled out, and then another one with four fouls. So maybe a bit of a uh, endurance type thing going on here for Coach Keen. As the horn sounds, and Hollison trickles back out onto the court. Four point lead for Hopkinton with six minutes left. Killers getting the most of that timeout. They better be get back on the court pretty soon. Referees being generous with uh, giving them time to do that. Hillers called the timeout, come out with a full court press. Sean Jewett with the ball, he crosses over half court, gives it to Lynch who takes the quick three. Ill-advised shot there, no good. Now Rankatora with it, he takes all the way, avoids the charge. His shot was short, but grabbing the ball away from Zach Zachariah Latifi was Brendan Kelly. Kelly making another play. This one, this ball awarded to Halston, but a great effort nonetheless from Kelly. There you go. Turnover there, now in the hands of Zizitsky. He takes the foul. Oh. Can't quite get the bucket to fall, but two more free throws coming from Zizitsky. Who shows why he has been named the captain of this Hiller team. He has come on strong, especially here in the second half. And continues to be a guiding force for the Hillers. I would agree with you, Tim, and uh, keeping things stable. Uh, need to knock down his shots, and he's got a good stroke there. As he knocks down another free throw. He's got to be approaching 20 points as the as the game uh, moves along. As five minutes and 32 seconds left. 
it was a two-point game. Now it's a five-point game, and now a six-point game. So uh, got a, a fantastic finish upon us, I think. Five and a half minutes left. Halston having trouble with the Hiller press now. Lynch in the corner for three. Short on that one. Mm. Rebound grab from Kester and Lynch, again, a little too aggressive. Gets called for the reaching. Ref is telling him to chill, chill a little bit. Plays with a lot of emotion. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but sometimes can bite you. Yeah. He's a he's a heck of a player and he's having a great game. And that's his fourth foul, so that's a big development. A bit too strong in the free throw there for Kester. The junior guard. Second free throw is good. Opening up a seven point lead now for Hopkinton. 5.15 left in the final quarter. Oh, wow. Pass right to Szczytski. Thank you very much. He drives, looking for another foul. Doesn't get it. Now Lynch gets the ball immediately. Barrels straight to the hoop. Oof. Almost, tried, almost looked like he was going to dunk that one. Beautiful play. Got the layup to trickle in. A lot, of, a lot of good athletes on the floor tonight here. Five point lead now for Hopkinton. McKenzie drives, pulls up, nice takes play. a nice floater, gets it to fall in. Tough shot, falling away. Nice jump there from Rankatore, anticipating Ooh. the pass. That's what, that could have been a foul right there. Lynch for three, he knocks it down. A little helter-skelter there, and the end result is uh, Panthers are cutting the lead to four points. Zitsky driving, spins, looking for help, oh, gets the bad. ball taken away from Dagnachu. And Zizitsky almost takes it right back. The three fired. Jewett, no good. The cry rebounded by Latifi down to Dagnachu. High oh, off the backboard for a lay-in. Two-point game now. And like you said, Steve, Coach Keen with the timeout in the Holliston crowd and bench is up and ready to roll. Down just two points now with four minutes left. Yeah, this is a great. Great game. I'm, I'm having a good time. You know, opening night, like I said, and interesting dynamics, two different types of teams, and they're battling it out. You know, in every sport, this, these two towns have mutual respect, and they want to, they all want to win. They want to beat each other, that's yep. for sure. That's for sure. And then, you know, I, I got to say, with the, the crowd's been well behaved and loud and well behaved, so very respectful that we got to. Got to acknowledge that. Sometimes it doesn't always happen that way. But, but still a lot of energy. Yeah. Definitely a lot of energy from the crowd for both sides. Hollison with a big showing here. Again, uh, Hopkinton, as we said, the Hiller faithful making their way out here for the opening night. And quite a game they've seen. Like you said, Steve, two-point game, four minutes left. A lot of important high-intensity plays. And we'll see, see what this Hiller team is made of over the last four minutes. And... Uh, Double bonus for the for the Panthers of, of Holliston. So any foul right now is two shots. The Hillers are in a single bonus with seven fouls. Token pressure. And the Panthers back off to a man-to-man -man right now. McKenzie controlling the ball for the Hillers. Szczytski off the court right now, taking a break. McKenzie drives, draws the foul. Apparently, the rotation from John, Sean Jewett was just a bit too late. And McKenzie rewarded with two free throws. Shaking up a bit as he get, makes his way to the free throw line. Two free throws incoming. Well, some of these guys, you know, uh, they're just sacrificing their body, throwing their bodies up, drawing, drawing fouls. And, McKenzie looked a bit uncomfortable in that first free throw. Hits off the back rim. Yeah, he didn't set. He didn't set himself uh, as he has uh, earlier in the in the night. Oh, oh, that one looked better. That one rimmed out. Yep. 0 for two on that trip. Lynch with it now for Halston. Pull up three. No good. Rebounded for 
Easy. Hopkinson almost a travel Close. there. The backcourt pressure almost causing a turnover there for Hopkinson, but Hillers keep possession. Now McKenzie with it. Nice pass inside to Kelly. He puts his head down. Could be a travel, yep. Travel called on the Hillers. It's a good idea, though. Get it down low. Uh-oh. Wide open was Lynch. And sticking his hand in there was Kester. Knocked the ball away. And hit with the foul. Free throw from Lynch, no good. Rebound grab by Rankatori, who has to have double digit rebounds by now, and he draws a foul. And now Hollison, excuse me, Hopkinton will shoot two. Yeah, it might be on one on one. Um, Apparently, also on Lynch's drive there, they called a foul on the floor because he only shot one free throw. And he missed the first end of the one and one. That allowed Hopkinton to grab the rebound. Yeah, I think you're right about that. First free throw for Rankatore, no good. Oh, you're right. Actually, that's my bad. I, I, I got it wrong. I'm looking at a little, I had a little senior moment there. It happens every once in a while. Uh, it's first night, right? Hillers, yeah, exactly. Double bonus. Second one for Rankatore, good. Three point lead now for Hopkinton. Mafiori has to be careful. Four fouls on him. Playing tight defense on Benko. Latifi with the drive and one. <laughs> <laughs> Celebration goes awry there for Allison. Sean Jewett takes a dip on the floor. That's a good move bringing Kelly back in with three minutes left in the game. One point game. Latifi has an opportunity to Natural hit a natural three-pointer, and uh, he misses the free throw. McKenzie with a great effort to grab the rebound. Under control, under control. As he settles things for Hopkinson, Mafiori thought about the three. Oh. Fires the pass inside to Kelly, a bit too strong. Picked off by Hollison. Latifi drives, stops, off the backboard, oh. a bit too strong. Rebounded by Rankatori. Caught a break there. Latifi's hit some big shots, and that was an e one of the easier ones. It just didn't go down for him, which uh, allows the Hillers to keep their one-point lead. McKenzie over to Mafiori, driving. Nice play. Nice dip. Gets the ball up. No shot. No good on the shot. Rebounded by Holliston. They're down the court Ooh, quick. Almost Lynch almost traveled. Gets blocked from behind by Ray Couture. And the crowd loves that one. There was a little body contact there, but to the ref's credit, I think they're letting the, the guys play as much as they can. That wasn't too obvious, but could have been a foul there. Banco fires the three. Tough good, shot good there. Good box by Zach. Zizitsky again gets the rebound, fires it over. McKenzie stops with the floater. No good. Rebound. Kelly Grab. keeping it alive. Mafiori has it, kicks it over. Settle it down, guys. Now McKenzie with it into the hands of Zizitsky. He drives, draws the foul. No good on the attempt, but he will be shooting too. Zach Zizitsky with that senior presence, one of three on the team. Sean Jewett took one for the team there. Uh, again, there was a lot of contact, and it wasn't all on him. Zach, Zach's been bringing the ball to the hoop aggressively all night. That was just a on a scale of 1 to 10 as far as a collision. That was about a 9.2. And, and Jewett got the worst of it. Zizitsky is not a small kid. No. He knocks down the free throw. Two point lead for Hopkinton. 147 left in an exciting opening game. And in particular, the fourth quarter has been a flurry of activity from both teams. Those are, those are really big free throws. Of course, they're all big. But when you swish two with a minute and a half left in the game, in a tight game, oof. And the tough drive there, Patrick Jewett, the and one. Showing some emotion after that bucket. 
with a chance to tie it for Hopkins, for Halston. Uh, Paulson's got some really tough, slippery offensive players. I mean that in a complimentary way. They're just really smooth, silky, take the ball to the hoop strong, very athletic. One point game. Easy, easy, oh. easy. McKenzie telegraphing the pass. Sean Jewett with the bucket. Now Halson with their first lead. I believe in the second half, up 66-65. McKenzie and drives, oh. bucket, I don't know how that one managed to come out, but it popped out, no and one, but two free throws coming for the junior, McKenzie. Yeah, that's too bad, he's looking for a little redemption after the play before, and again, we got a fantastic finish, free throws, comes down to free throws, and I think uh, the Hillers, to their credit, are in this game because they've hit the majority of them. And it doesn't always work out that way, but that's you can tell they've uh, spent a lot of time on the free throw line during uh, preseason, and it's paying off right now. Let's see if it pays off to the point where they can win the game. Yep, 1.15 left here in this opening season opening game between TVL rivals Halston and Hopkinton. 66-65 lead for Halston. Hopkinton has had the lead for the majority of the game for most of the second quarter and most of the third and fourth quarters. But here again off the steal, Sean Jewett hit the layup, putting Halston up one. Now we'll see how Hopkinton responds, being down for the first time in quite a while. And, and with one senior, Drew, uh, Zach Zitsky has been playing. Uh, Tom Leone and Michael Ionelli are also seniors. They haven't seen the court today. So Zitsky is going to have to provide that leadership. And we'll see how the Hills respond over the last minute and 15. Yep, and both teams in a double bonus, so every foul is two shots. And uh, the Hillers, Hillers are having a meeting, and uh, one of the uh, Holliston players decided to join that meeting. McKenzie's his form on his free throw shots has looked a little off the past couple free throws. Maybe he's dealing with a nagging injury. Either way, misses that first one. Could be fatigue. It's a, long, it's a long night. He's had a great game. Oh, Second big. one knocks in. 66 to 66. Patrick Jewett driving and one again. Took it down through multiple Hiller defenders, drew the foul, and knocked down the layup. That's a heck of a play. Didn't see a whole lot of contact there, but he came flying through the lane, and and uh, ref decided to call the foul there. No good on the free throw. His second consecutive miss on an and one opportunity, 68-66. Easy. Time to see who wants the ball here for the Hillers late. McKenzie takes a drive, shot up, oh. and good. The junior rising up to the occasion, 68-68, 45 seconds left. Patrick Jewett again drives, tough shot, gets it to fall in. Patrick Jewett, the last wow. two minutes of the fourth quarter. McKenzie drives again, tough shot, no good. He gets his own rebound, fires up a shot, no good. Yeah, they forced that one, that's too bad. Aaron Lynch, uh, excuse me, not Aaron Lynch, Andrew Lynch draws the foul there right around half court. And he will be shooting two free throws. Andrew Lynch and Patrick Jewett, two captains, seniors, both six feet. Similar type players, both slashing type players. And, you know, uh, down the stretch, they both together have brought the Panthers back. To, to this point with a two-point lead, 23 seconds left. Big free throw coming up. And it's good, 71-68, timeout called. 23 and a half seconds left, Hiller's down three. Yeah, I think, uh, I'm sure Coach Keen has some some plan here, and I think if, uh, if I were coaching from up here, which I'm not, but if I were, I would probably try to get the ball down low you know, get a quick uh, two. try to get a quick two, at least draw the foul. 
Um, or, or they want to. I don't know. The, the last, you know, extended part of the game, there hasn't been anyone on the Hiller squad that's draining any threes right now. Right. So no one really right. has that that rhythm going. So I think, given that, I would probably uh, try to get something down to yeah. Szczytski down low. Szczytski or. Um, uh, Brendan Kelly, who hasn't had a lot of points to, in the latter part of the game, but still with 23 and a half seconds left, uh, there's still time to get a good shot, just work it down low, just stay under control, keep their composure. Panthers are playing tough D. This is a sort of make or break right here. Well, the crowd has certainly got their money's worth on this game. Season opening game between two very talented TVL schools across the majority of sports. And tonight has been no different. 71-68 with 23 and a half seconds left. What will Hopkinton do? Play to get Mafior open. Reading the pass was Patrick Jewett. Yep. He knew exactly what was going on, just could not handle the pass and knocked it out of bounds. Took a while for that play to develop. They they need to work it down low. Mafiori wanted the three. Mackenzie Lynch oh! the three. Knocks it down. Three seconds left. Lynch with it now. He takes the long three. Just off oh. the front rim. And we are going to overtime. 71-71 after four quarters. Wow, that's, McKenzie. That's one for the for the memory book. You know, McKenzie's, uh, he's been in a lot of plays this whole game, and, you know, that's just, he'll remember that shot for a long time. That's a great shot. Keeps by some more time. That's amazing. Ben McKenzie, the junior, stepping up. I asked earlier who would be the player to step up for Hawkington over the last couple of minutes, and Ben McKenzie had made, made a few mistakes, has turned the ball over, but by and large, he's been the player that Hawkington has gone to in these last few minutes to score, whether it be free throws, layups, or in that case, a three. And now we have a tie game heading, wow. in, heading into the final, maybe, uh, overtime, final four minutes of this one, 71-71. Yep, that's uh, an amazing finish. Uh, no matter what happens, this game's great, but I'm sure you know both teams would love to get the W after such a draining game already. And again, the foul situation comes into play. I haven't seen Breslin come in in a while. He hasn't, he's, unless, uh, you know, fresh legs or whatever, you get to see him in if they need him. You know, with uh, uh, Ambrosoni fouled out. Right. Uh, the, the Hillers are, they're hanging in there with about eight players available to them. But oh, the, yep, sorry, go ahead. No, those are the, the crowds, the student sections of each each uh, school have not sat down all game, which is kind of fun. A lot of, a lot of positive energy. N no trash talking, just good old high school, high school positive energy, which is great. Overtime set to begin. Ball goes up. Kelly grabs the tip. Szczytski drives early. The reverse, high off the glass. Zach Zizitsky not taking any chances in this overtime. Billers with a two-point lead. Kasarjan drives wide open. What a move to get by the defender. Wow. Tie game. Two points in 15 seconds. Uh, two baskets in 15 seconds. It's like a slugfest here, Tim. Yeah, both teams have certainly taken their licks in this one. McKenzie drives, jump shot. Bit too strong. Rebound goes to the Hillers. Ooh, almost a Szczytski travel. Szczytski did travel. Hit with the call. But again, the refs have been consistent on that one all night. Yeah, I think Turnover they've, and Carlson. Huff. I think you're right about that. You know, they've, been, they've had a good game. If they weren't, I'd let you know about it. <laughs> <laughs> you? Really? No. <laughs> Kassarjan again with the drive. Open three for Latifi. He knocks it down. He has been on fire from beyond the arc. And a huge reason why Hollison was able to come back in this one. Money. McKenzie backs off because Sargent fires the three. Can't quite get it to trickle in. Kelly with the board. Turns around, spins, gets the layup over great defense from Latifi. Did not matter. Kelly knocked it down. Strong player. 
Jewett, back and forth. Jewett with it, drives right by Kelly, takes the contact. Great shot from Jewett. He has really stepped up in the but fourth quarter and overtime. Not a lot of passing going on. It's a little street ball like right now, but it's uh, fun to watch. Whatever works, I suppose. A three-point lead now for the Panthers. Um, almost another travel. Kelly backs his way in. Shot Oof. gets it to fall. Kelly stepping up. And a timeout from Coach Keith. Wow. I'm out of I'm not even playing and I'm getting a little drained up here. It's back and forth, and you know, this quarter. I think what was it? 71 71 apiece. Yep, and right away, 78-77 now. It's a lot of a lot of scoring in a minute and a half. And um, some of the players have four fouls, so I think I know they're being cautious to not to not Scotty Mackin taking over top of the hill. Man is getting the, the fans fired up. Sort of legendary here in Hopkinton. Not that, not that this crowd needs any firing up though. They've been ready yeah, and going all night. Awesome. But the Hillers again will need any advantage they can get over in this last two minutes. We'll take it. Trailing by one. Legend in Hopkinton. See if you bring some good luck. Okay. Play resuming now. Halston up 78-77. Pass from Patrick Jewett almost picked off by Zizitsky. Knocked out of bounds. Remains Halston ball. Plenty of time. It's almost like you can kind of catch your breath. Two minutes left in the first overtime. Sean Jewett drives. Fakes gets him defender almost off the three seconds. Blocked. Kassarjan's shot blocked. That's a foul. McKenzie grabs the board. Looked like he was fouled. No call. Kassarjan now called with the foul. Took about three times, but McKenzie finally gets that foul. These guys are going to sleep well. I wonder if Coach Keen will have a an early practice tomorrow morning. Maybe if they win, maybe the boys will catch a break, but they're playing great. No matter what happens, you know, they, they're playing a bunch of seniors for the most part, and these sophomores and juniors, and you know, I know Zach's a senior, but for the most part, a lot of underclassmen here. Right. And they've uh, really maintained their composure. McKenzie they have knocks a, down two big free throws. And they have a lead, so that's great. One point lead, 79-78, 152. A long pass across the court to uh -oh. Lynch. He drives, gets the gets the layup hard off the backboard. 80 to 79 now. Guys, got some springs. Andrew Lynch gets some hops there. Mafior to, to Zizitsky at the top of the key. Spins by. Layup takes it all the way. Can't quite get it to finish. Kind of came down on his foot there. Senior captain a little shaken up, but steps to the line anyway, getting ready for two free throws. R rolled his ankle. You can kind of see he's trying to gather himself a little bit. Uh, no pressure, Zach. It's just a minute and a half left, down by one in overtime, but we, we need you, buddy. Emil Exalom comes in for the first time in here in the fourth quarter and overtime. Played about 40 seconds in the third quarter. Got his third foul, and we have not seen him since. A missed free throw, but a line violation looks like called on Halston. I think it's a double bonus, uh, although I'm, I, I think it's they remain in Was double bonus double? in overtime because both teams are in double bonus. So that might be the call, but I'm not sure. Going to run with that. Second free throw, no good for Zizitsky. Tough go there for Hawkington with missing out on two points. Lynch takes the deep two. Can't get it to fall. Rebound from McKenzie. Trips, but nothing called. Tough call there for Hawkington. The trip not seen. 
McKenzie very clearly getting tripped up by a, by a Panther, rolled on the floor, and a travel call there. Tough break there for Hawkinson, yeah. but not much they can do. Down one now with 110 left. Open shot for Latifi. Over the, over the top. And another foul for Exalome right away. That should be two shots, I think. What's that call? Oh. What? Uh, I guess it was called on Hopkinton. Somehow, I had... You're going to have to explain to me how they well, called they that have, They have the fifth foul on the board, so... Uh, Coach Keen obviously not happy about that one. And we up here are a bit confused as to how that foul occurred, which is the fifth on Brandon Kelly, who's been huge for Hopkinton. It looked like a clean box out. If anything, and over the back. Yeah. And we couldn't see everything, but from what we could see up here, uh, it's, it, it's a confusing call at the very least. At the moment, he's still on the floor. I'm talking about Kelly. And Exo Home is on the line. He hasn't been seen much playing time the second half or overtime, but he comes back in with, um, again, it's an interesting strategy that, that Halston has used with him. He certainly can make a, have a presence in the game being 6'10", but uh, right now he's on the line with, with a minute left, and he's got some pretty big free throws. I don't know if they have the wrong player, but Kelly remains in the game, with, despite the fact that they show five fouls. I, unless they get, maybe they get an extra foul in overtime. That's my only, I, I don't know. Sorry for guessing. I'm just <laughs> trying to understand why, what, what that situation is. I have to imagine, we don't have any sort of communication with the scores table, but I have to imagine that, I guess, it wasn't his fifth foul, and they must have given him an, an earlier one that wasn't on him because he's still in the game with five fouls. Now that's a foul. Well, there's a, feels like there's a, an eternity left in this game. There's right. a minute left, one point game. Kelly's still on the line. We're, we're still unclear how he's still in the game because they showed him with five fouls unless Unless it was only his fourth and they didn't correct it. Right. But we're, we're going to, I don't want to dwell on that for too much longer. The, the, the bigger situation is for him to hit these two free throws. Kelly makes the first, ties the game at 80. Second one is up and in. Kelly, two very, very clutch free throws. Ice water in his veins, man. Nothing but net on both of them. Senior or junior. Lynch drives. Great defense from Kelly. Runs right into a brick wall, but Lynch makes it anyway. 82-81, 40 seconds left. McKenzie drives, shot up, tough. He can't get it to fall. Axel Ohm with the board. Gets it out to Lynch. He takes... Oh! Jumps from a long way away. Hits the ground hard. Looks like he's up and okay. That was quite a collision he had with the floor. He, he took off from the middle of the, the lane and it was up in the air for quite a long time. Drew the contact from Ben McKen uh who was that? Uh, there we go. And that's on Ben the, McKenzie that's and he, that, that's, McKenzie. That's, that's his fifth. Oh, okay. 
And yep, now McKenzie's out. It looks like the ref's having a bit of a trouble kind of figuring this whole foul thing out. As we are. <laughs> <laughs> McKenzie gets a nice round of applause from the crowd. He had a good game and uh, had hit, obviously hit the big shot to bring the game into overtime, which was huge. First free throw good for Lynch. Second free throw good as well. Three point lead for Halston. 30 seconds left. Let's see what the Hillers can do without their point guard, their floor general, Ben McKenzie. That's a good timeout. And Coach Tom Keen is going to talk about that. How exactly they're going to deal without McKenzie for the last 26 seconds, down three. Yeah, I, I don't know what the answer is. That's why I'm not coaching. <laughs> but uh, I think I think Halston, you got to give them credit because they, they fell back uh, af after the quick opening the first quarter going up by seven nothing and he had a nice lead and then the, the Hillers brought it back you know uh, to an eight point lead at halftime extended it to 11 points Panthers come back and tie it up and went took the lead and uh, this has been a, you know, a lot a lot of great athletic play on both sides and uh, w w however this thing works out it's been a great game and if there are all these games like this very entertaining right and uh, we'll see uh, we got they Hillers need to play right now is what they need. they need. They're down by three, 26 seconds left. And uh, what they do, I don't know. Uh, they haven't hit a three-pointer in a long time, but this might be the time to try to hit one. Right, really in the entire second half. In the first half, uh, Mafiori knocked down a few. And then obviously in the second half, we had that three from McKenzie, which tied the game. But at really, I believe that's the only one. It's yep. At least in the fourth quarter, maybe the second half for Hopkins. They got Br Breslin in. Ooh. A quick foul called. Thank you very much. That's not a bad thing. Minimal time coming off the clock and two free throws coming up for Hollison, uh, excuse me, Hopkinson off the Hollison foul. Breslin in there for a second and a half and he's always out. And then we got um, Drew Rancatori coming back in for probably defensive purposes and board purposes. First free throw good for Matthew Ori. He's had a nice game. Oh. Knocks down the second one. Clutch Ice water. free throws from the sophomore. Very clutch. 84-83 now, 23 seconds left. Need a stop. Kassarjan bringing it up for Holliston. Lynch now with it and a, a quick foul called. After the Hillers let about six seconds whittle off the clock, Lynch will head to the free throw line for two. That's a good move by uh, Coach bringing Breslin in, who has three-point potential. Hopefully he's been heating up on the bench because he's been on the bench a lot of the second half. But uh, he's a very uh, composed young man, and hopefully either he'll or he will have a chance or somebody else have a chance to... Uh, Get an important shot next time down. Lynch short on the first free throw off the front rim. I mean, there's a fatigue factor, Tim. As it, it's a lot of points, 80, 83 points apiece here, right. 83, 84 points. And in an especially uh, fast overtime period. Yep. 17 seconds, plenty of time Hillers for a good shot. Hiller's down too. Breslin brings it up the court. Help him out, help him out. Stuck Breslin now from three-point line. He drives, shot up. No luck, but rebound caught from Kelly. It looks like a foul was called on the shot. Breslin, two shots. No pressure on the sophomore or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I, got a, I have a good feeling about this. Breslin with two huge free throws. First hmm. one off the front rim. Seven seconds left. Hopkinton down two. Let's see if they try to make it and then foul or miss on purpose and get the rebound. He misses. Rebound grabbed by Kelly. He's on his back. A oh. jump ball. 
goes to Holliston. A very, very quick jump ball call. That's a really tough one. Awarded tough. to Holliston. Yeah, that was a tough one. 6 seconds left for Hopkinson to try to force a steal. Latifi throws it in, tipped out by Sizitsky. Tipped out of Hiller Ball. Referee said Hiller Ball. Oh. I think the Hill, I mean the referee was pointing in the Hiller direction right. and I I'm just interpreting that as Oh. The player just asked, yep, and it, it is Holliston Ball yep. after that one. He might have just poked the point the wrong way. Right. But 85-83 with 6.2 seconds left. And still still time for Holliston, for Hopkinson, excuse me, to come back. Obviously, get a, if they can try to get a quick steal, or as soon as the ball gets inbounded, uh, got a foul. Exactly, and uh, you know, all the, like I said, there's a fatigue factor, and it's, that's tough for Breslin to come in. He hadn't played much in the second half, excuse me, and or in overtime. Right. And then to, uh, for him to come in on the line, I'm not making excuses for him, but that's a tough spot. Uh, he's he's played a great game. Again, hats off to the Hillers. Playing kind of shorthanded with nine players and a lot of underclassmen. And look at him, down by two against a very formidable opponent. Here, opponent. And uh, the Hillers need to a, need a catch a break here is what they need. Just all, you know, all hands on deck here. Quite the start to the season, though. First game and no time wasted between these two teams and putting forth an absolutely terrific game. Inbounds into Savarjan. Kasarjan, excuse me. He is fouled right away. A second and a half ticks off the clock and Halston will have two free throws. If he makes these two, it almost all but seals the game. But still two very important free throws up for Kasarjan. First free throw is good from Kasarjan. He's quietly had a nice steady game. I mean, he hasn't had as many points as Lynch or, or Patrick Jewett, but he's he's really uh, quite a player. He's, oh, that's a, Second free throw, nothing but net. That's a tough one. And that probably does it. it here. Deep three from Breslin, Ooh. no good. And Hollison wins the season opening battle against Hopkinton in overtime, 87 to 83. A disappointing loss for the Hillers, but ultimately a great game and a great effort here from the home team. Yeah, and a special thanks to our director, Mike Tarosian, Samantha Dings on graphics, cameras, John Ritz, Bob Hamilton. Great guy, great job, guys. Really appreciate the support. And uh, yeah, Tim, that was a that was a heck of a game. Very entertaining. I think everybody got their money's worth tonight. Tough ending to the, uh, with, a, with a, the loss for the Hillers, but a lot of mutual respect for both towns, uh, including the fans uh, looking forward to the next game. And speaking of that next game, the Hillers will head to Norton to take on the Lancers on Tuesday, December 12th at 6.30 p.m. in another TVL game. But that does it here for us in Hopkinton. Again, the Halston Panthers win over Hopkinton, 87-83 in overtime. For Tim Palladic here at H Game TV and for Steve Spector, thanks for watching everybody. We hope you join us next time.